Hello, I am Brett from Bearded Man Studios, and today I'll be talking about the is cleared for buffer boolean, is server owner boolean, and networked behaviors dictionary. The is cleared for buffer boolean is a way for us to internally check if an object should be continuously buffering any of its RPC calls and sending information back and forth. So what this means is that there's these networked objects that you may be instantiating and when you destroy them later on, any client that joins in from that point on doesn't necessarily need that information from where it began and where it end because it has already destroyed itself. So we remove everything of that object and destroy its buffer. That is what this is cleared for buffer flag is set for. Now, if an object is already persisting or existing in the scene itself, then it hasn't really been instantiated into the scene through the networking manager. So it is already consistent with the scene. So in that case, the cleared for buffer is never really cleared because it needs to call any functionality. It needs to get to the point where it has destroyed that object and then when it does it will destroy it on the client and it will look in sync with the server so that is what the is cleared for buffer boolean does it is mainly an internal call it's not something that you're normally going to use unless you're expanding on the existing networking solution itself but for your purposes i will just i'm just explaining what it does and it's not necessarily something that you probably are going to use for your game now the is server owner flag is just a way for you to check the ID the owner ID of that object if it matches the server. The server will always be player zero. So as an example, basically this is exactly what the is server owner is doing as a getter. It's basically just doing this. Now instead of doing that, you have the is server owner. So that way you don't have to do that. It's just a simple getter. That is all it does. It's just a way for you to determine if an object is owned by the server. Now the networked behaviors. This dictionary is generated and continuously added to depending on how these objects are being instantiated into the scene. If it's just a simple mono behavior, it's not going to be added to it. It has to be a simple networked mono behavior derivative in order for this list to expand. And you are able to access this list of networked behaviors by simply doing networked behaviors, which is a static uh, dictionary that you're able to pull from simple networked mono behavior. So this means that you're able to use the networked objects in your game from anywhere in your code, whether that be a mono behavior or be something that's outside of it, like a plugin. You're free to just simply call the simple networked mono behaviors and do networked behaviors. And that will give you the dictionary that you need in order for you to grab this particular player object that you have created, or not necessarily a player object, just a networked object. Now, in order for you to grab the specific or specified networked object, you will need to pass in the networked ID. So the network, every simple networked mono behavior derivative will all have its own networked ID. The networked ID is a unique ID that's generated for any simple networked mono behavior derivative as you're using Forge Networking. So when you instantiate, this network ID is created for that particular object and it's unique, whereas owner ID is uh, unique in the sense that it's tied to or associated to a player. Now that I have passed in the network ID, I can now do unity based calls or networking based calls. So I can easily do my get component and in here I can do my simple networked mono behavior example and pull anything I need to do out of this particular class because I know that it matches my owner ID that I am instantiating in here. So with all that being said, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.